everybody, it's Kevin from Hats and Guitars. Uh, good morning. It's Monday morning. Actually, now it's the afternoon. It's midday, a little afternoon, and uh, I've got the house to myself. I figured I'd say hi to you guys. So, yeah, let's fix the green screen here. This is, uh, I have some props here that I use on my other channel. I also have a uh, comedy channel um, that uh, I'm partners with a, uh, an extremely young and talented uh, young director. Uh, the two of us write uh, comedy skits and uh, we have different characters, you know. Maybe like, like Clay, Crash Cup, the scientist. Oh, and Safety Dog. And Lobo. Frank Berenger. If you guys could uh, drop a little subscription there at Frankie's World NYC, uh, I know two people who will personally be super happy. Thank you. Um, let's talk about some basic hat care today. I know some of you guys have got um, steamers. This is a Jiffy steamer. This is a really cool Jiffy steamer. It works like a humidifier, kind of. You just you fill up this little section here with water and uh, you just hit the switch and it steams like some of my earliest videos that I made years ago uh, were when I ran a small shop in the East Village called Pork Pie Hatters and I ran an entire shop with one of these Jiffy steamers and I would shape hats like crazy for people doing all kinds of stuff so it is good enough to do just about anything uh, it's a strong steamer and uh, those of you who have steamers uh, probably, you know, want to have some tips on how to, uh, you know, clean your hats, how to take care of your hats. Um, hats that are made of felt are generally going to have a shape that's blocked into it, okay? The shape that it wants to automatically bounce to. So in other words, if you open it like this, the hat is gonna sort of pop into a certain shape that's embedded in there, like a memory. You can see it, you can see it. So press it lightly. Oh, there it goes, right? You can see the little uh, footprint of where it's gonna be. This pinch, see it? And this side, okay. This is a combination of the original shape of this hat and me squeezing it and doing my repetitive motions, squeezing it the same way every day. It might get shaped like my hand sideways a little like that, you see? All those things happen. But if you open this hat, do a light steam, steam it open, okay? The original shape is still there, you know? So if I could steam out this shape, this little teardrop, the center crease that this came with is still there. And you can feel it because it's blocked in. That's it. That's the original center crease. The pinches were probably pretty gentle. Yeah. These, you know, that's closer to its original shape. This is sad. All right. Um, what I'm getting at is that the steam is going to lock in these shapes, okay? So let's say you wanted a tighter pinch all the time. You could go like this, hit it with some steam, okay, and then let it cool. That will be the, ne the next uh, memory. That'll pop back to that every single time now. Uh, if you lower the crown a little bit, you know, just lower it in the front, let's say, like that. Okay, let's say we lowered the crown to make it super low. It's not very even, but whatever. You know, we could lock that in, and that would be the new shape, um, whatever we wanted. So the steaming will basically melt the stiffener that's on there. It will temporarily heat up the stiffener, causing it to sort of soften and melt. And then you could make your change, manipulate the hat, okay? Let's say we're going for a pork pie, so get the shape. Okay, once you hit it with steam, 
that's going to cool into the shape. There's your new memory. Okay, so if I don't like it, what I can do is I could hit it with some steam now. Okay, then manipulate it. Get it the way I want, and it'll dry into place. There's two different ways to do it. You could steam it while it's cooling, or you can manipulate it and then at the end hit it with steam and lock it in. Um, the advantage of shaping it while it's hot and cooling is you get less wrinkles. You, you make smoother shapes. So in other words, if you're trying to make a nice center crease that looks smooth, you do it while it's hot. Um, you don't want to do it just cool like that, you know. Um, it'll be smoother, less wrinkly looking while it's soft, okay. Then when it cools, the stiffener is hardening again, making that little plasticky shell. Now it's also possible to reconstitute the stiffener that's already on the hat. So if your hat feels kind of soft like this, sometimes just hitting it with steam will make that stiffener kind of melt and then harden again and it sort of brings back the stiffener that's in there. But it only works to a certain extent. That works when you still have a layer of stiffener in it, but you've been grabbing it so much that you're making little microscopic cracks in that kind of finish, that uh, little eggshell thin uh, layer of stiffener. So the stiffener is still there. You just got to melt it again and let it cool into a nice hard shell. But um, the stiffener is there, but you make little cracks from just playing with your hat, bending it a lot, you know, putting it down on its brim, movement. So, sometimes you'll steam a hat and nothing happens at all, okay? Um, that's because there's not enough stiffener on there. If your hat is way too soft, you're not uh, getting enough definition and the hat just can't hold up its own weight, you know, it just flops because it's so soft. Well, you need that stiffener to keep it up, to bind it, to hold it. It's like a thin plasticky coating that's on the hat, okay? so. When you steam, you melt the shell and then it cools again in the new place. So you're able to lift the brim up. Without the stiffener, it just stays soft and just keeps flopping. So you need it to be sprayed. Let the spray harden, okay? Then steam it cool again. I mean, steam it hot. Bring it up and hold it still, perfectly still while it dries. Okay, then when you let go, the brim will stay up because it's the stiffener that's holding it. All right, so uh, what can you use for stiffener? Um, I generally use two things. I use, there's a little black can called Scout Hat Stiffener. I use that stuff a lot. Scout is like a little black pump bottle. Um, it's felt hat stiffener. I generally use it on felt and straw though, I think. Um, that works pretty well. And I also use Supermax uh, hairspray, which works just about as well. Um, you need a little bit more of it, but um, it's way cheaper and you get a lot, lot more of it. So it kind of, it's all relative. I think the Scout is maybe a little bit better, but the hairspray is really good and, and it works well. You just have to get a Supermax type, like Suave, Super Hold, Rave, Super Hold, whatever, Max Hold and uh, Aquanet. Those are the three. When it dries, they don't really have a smell or anything. Um, if that smell bothers you, um, if there is a slight perfume or something, uh, I don't notice it. Uh, but anyway, uh, it'll give your hat a nice, just a, not a luster, but it'll give it a, uh, just a nice new look to it. Uh, it doesn't leave buildup. And you cannot get hairspray or stiff or hat stiffener on the leather, and you cannot get it on the bands. Okay, so what do you do if you're spraying the top? You can make a little belt out of cardboard. Okay, then staple it together as a ring and put the ring over the hat, so it'll just cover the bands. You got a little ring of cardboard. It'll work pretty much out of anything. You know, just cut up a cereal box or whatever. Make a belt and then make a ring out of it, put it over your hat. Um, you could spray the upper side. I like to spray the underside of the brim, to be honest. What I'll do is I'll usually put a hat jack in here to cover the uh, leather. It covers there and there. 
which is enough, and it also works as a handle, so I can hold the hat while I'm spraying. Spray with the other hand, you know, hold it by the hat jack here. So, if you don't have a hat jack to cover the leather, you can just put a big ball of tissue um, or, or a bandana or something. You just make a big ball that covers this, but doesn't cover this. One way to do it is make little pancakes of tissue paper, newspaper, anything, magazine. Make little pancakes, little round pancakes this size, and stack them up, stack them up until you get to the top. Okay, and then you spray the underside. First, you have to get some packing tape, this stuff here. Packing tape works to get the dust off of, uh, you know, just get a roll of big packing tape. You make a little circle out of it, a ring, pat it down because you don't want to stiffen a hat, spray it when it's dusty. You'll be basically sealing that dust in under this little glass, like, uh, you know, sort of a thin plastic coating. So you're keeping the dust inside like forever. So what you want to do is dust the hat really well, really pat it down, get the edges, everything. Give your hat a good dusting anywhere you're going to spray. Okay, cover up the leather, like I said, and spray a nice, thin, yet even coat. You know, just what I do is I'll do the top, like, I'll do the, bo uh, the bottom, and maybe I'll change my grip, and I'll do the side, sort of in four pieces. Um, rather than going like a ring, I'll just kind of go, turn it, okay. Put your hat like this, let it uh, cool for a good long time, an hour, or if you have a nice fan or something, maybe a half an hour will do it, you know. But uh, the more the better, just let that really stiffen up and cool completely. Then what you do is you get your steamer out. Here's the steamer. All right. You get the steamer on and you can start Pushing things up, push the brim up, push the brim up, push the brim up, hold it, let it cool. Now take it out of the steam, let it cool. Okay, hit it in here with the steam, push the brim up. You can even push it up as you're steaming, and then take it away, let it cool, hold it, hold it, hold it. 30 seconds, maybe 20, 30 seconds, let go. Okay, so you can get that brim all the way up, wherever it's sagging, that's a very common thing. The flange of the hat flattens and droops, so you want to get that up. Anything else you want to fix, you know, let's say you already have a good center crease here. Fix it up, get it perfect. Zap it with steam, you know. You want to get your Pinches even, so always look from a bird's eye view. Make sure they're going back to the same point. One of them looks too far, fix it from within. Hit it with steam, okay? Um, tools, what do you need to take care of your hats? Okay, let's go through the basics. Um, this stuff is really good. Get some packing tape. You don't need the fancy applicator thing. You know, just like you know, fold it over when you're done so you don't have to go looking for it. You know, I hate when you have to go looking for the edge, you know. Um, yeah, get some packing tape. It's pretty important. It's like, it's very important. You know, any of this stuff, you just make a nice ring out of it and um, you pat the hat down. This is good for everyday cleaning. Um, you can bring your brim down like this, okay? And then, Pat it down with the tape, tape loops. Um, one of those roller things will work too. Of course it'll work, but it's not gonna get into all these little crevices and little bits and areas as good as the tape ring. So I like to just make a little ring, go around, spin the tape loop around, you know, so you're getting nice new parts of the tape, you know, like one side, turn it over, use the other side. When the tape run, run looks all fuzzy and it's not sticky anymore, throw it out, get another one. Okay, do the upside of the brim, do the edge. Don't forget the edge. If you have a wool hat, um, there's always a lot of dust around the edge on wool hats. They acquire it there. So always pat that down really hard, work on each section. And 
Once you get the dust off your hat, your hat will look already like 50% newer. It'll make like an old hat look new just by getting rid of all the dust, you know. Do the top, do the sides, everything. Just get your, your tape loops, dust the whole thing down. Now, in here, you want to also pat down the band. Pat it down. Be gentle, though. Okay. Pat it down also with the tape. Then, you want to get your hat brush. Any kind of brim brush is good. They're generally horsehair, um, dark or light like this, it doesn't matter. Some people get a set of darks for their dark hats and a set of, uh, and a light brush for their light hats, so they don't get like white powder on their black hats and black powder on their white hats and stuff. I mean, you can do that, but it's not necessary. You could just, you know, beat it out a little before you use it. But if you do have a lot of hats, black and white and silver belly and black and dark hats you know getting one light hat one dark hat is good uh the first i mean one light brush and one dark brush could be useful the first few days you might want to pick out any of the loose bristles there'll always be a few loose ones um it'll look like you're picking out a lot of them but just be very careful gentle don't use a lot of force just a very smooth Okay, get them out. Another way to do it is to just beat it. Okay, you get all the loose ones out. Don't do it around your coffee. You don't want to get any inside your coffee. And then, let's finish the band. The, the band is grow grain. It has these crevices going up, little tunnels, little slots like poker chips. So what you want to do is you want to brush upwards along the slot with the grain. So you're getting the dust out of those little holes now. So just grab it by the sweat band, okay? And brush upwards. Possible, you know, try not to mess with the brim too much, but you could, you could get the brim out of your way with your thumb if you want. Or you could flip everything down. That works better. I'm holding it by the leather. Okay, go upwards. Okay, at the end, if your your band looks like it's risen a little, you can karate chop it down like this with your the side of your hand so it's resting against the brim if it rose up, okay? That's a thing. Brim, bands do rise and lower and stuff. You can just lower them like this or karate chop them down by hitting it towards the bottom, pushing it down. All right. So you just clean the band. Next thing you could do is the hat counterclockwise always brush counterclockwise okay go around counterclockwise as many times as you can as many as you want the more you do it the better it looks so first thing you're going to do is dust it okay next thing you're going to do is brush it counterclockwise the top two i'm going to get in here As many times as you feel you have patience to do is good. The more you brush it, the better. Everything counterclockwise is gonna make your hat look nicer, feel better, softer. You're taking all the stuff that's matted, like a matted carpet, and you're brushing it out, and you're getting everything going the right way so it looks like velvet again, not like matted carpet, you know? I don't know if you have any shag carpets in your house, but if you sit there or you stand there for a long time, it gets matted down and tangled and dirt gets inside of the, you know, of the, uh, the little tangles. So what you're doing now is you're getting that dirt out and you're getting out all the tangles and you're bringing everything in the same direction at the same time. Now, a little mist of steam would help. For instance, you know, like here's the, my nozzle. You, you keep it far away, a little mist. If you miss the hat a tiny bit and then brush, it will help to get the dust out. But you're not going you're not going close to the steamer. That's what you do when you want to change the shape. Heavy heat, far away, and you just missed it. Okay, almost like a a dew drop covering on, on on all the hairs. Just a little mist, and then brush, 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 brush. Lots, 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 lots. We did that thing with the band to get it up. First we. We dabbed it with the tape. Now we're going up to get the dust out of the crevices. If the band rises up, 
push it down with the karate chops, chopping the bottom part, bottom part of the band here and pushing down at the same time. Okay. You can do something like this. Keep that counterclockwise thing going. You could open it to get the dust out of there too. Okay, the other side often is not counterclockwise. A lot of times it's clockwise. Um, so what you do is you can check, you can try both ways. Most of the time clockwise is going to look smoother. It's like brushing velvet. If you brush it the wrong way, it usually looks kind of darker and you can just see a texture in it. So most likely the underside of the brim will go clockwise. I usually don't go nuts with the bottom of the brim. You know, unless there's a stain or something I want to buff out. All right, brushing it is really good for it. Um, the more brushing, the better. I try not to steam my hats often. Steam them as little as possible. If your hats are out of shape and you want to get them back in shape, that's good. You could, you know, but don't steam them for no reason just because like you want to steam them. Steam them to fix problems. Steam them to give it a little mist to get all the, the hair the same way and, you know, just as a little conditioning thing. But uh, don't do heavy steaming a lot. You can over steam a hat and if you're gonna steam a hat, you know, you steam little areas, you work on it, you heat it, you let it cool, you move on to another area, heat it. You don't steam the whole hat and stuff because that's, it's a process of cooling and heating, you know. So you're heating something, you're letting it cool into place. Uh, you heat this area, you change the shape, and you let it cool into place. So if the whole hat is wet and the whole hat is hot, it's never cooling and the process is never working. So you work on one part, you know, like if you're doing the brim, you do the side of the brim, you work on the side for a while, you get it right, okay, then you work to the back. You do this area, you know, you move it, you let go, cool it, you let go. So you do one part at a time when you're steaming and uh, try not to steam often. Brushing is good, you can brush it often. If the hat is dusty, dust it with the tape. You're gonna see some little bit of felt coming off on the tape, it's not bad. Um, you could do it for 20, 30 years and the hat is not going to go bald or anything like that. Um, things like sandpapering the hat is the kind of thing that you don't want to do much of. You can do that, you know, every year or two, every two, three, four, five years. Sanding is to buff out stains and stuff. So you get a flexible sanding block. Uh, it's called a flexible sanding sponge. Um, or some sanding pa sandpaper. I don't know what gauges I use. I use stuff that's like fine or fine to medium, uh, not ultra, ultra fine. And um, you have to kind of do the whole thing. You can't just do one spot because then it looks worse. So what you're doing is you're basically getting all the fingerprints and dirt and smog and everything off of it, uh, the hat by just giving it a little buffing. You're almost like getting the top, top layer of felt off. Um, the part that's dirt and underneath it is nice fresh felt so you do the whole hat the technique is everything it has to be even and it has to be everything if you're just going to do one spot you'll have this one spot that looks clean and the rest of the hat looks dirty it's just not right so you have to almost feather it it's very very gentle technique that's why I like to use the, the sanding um, sponge I use these red ones. One side is like wavy and the other side is flat. It's a, I think a 3M flexible sanding sponge. And um, they work very well at getting that good kind of flat surface and turning corners too. Um, but don't do that often. Just do that if you see a stain, you can try it, work on it, see if it comes out. If it looks like, you know, it's coming out, then move on, do more. But if it looks like it's not working at all, that's it, give up. Don't keep sanding your hat. Um, sanding is something you have to have good technique. It could take some time. Um, the band, this comes from stacking hats, okay? The top hat pushed this down. So you can steam this, all right? And what you do is you're gonna steam the band, the whole band here, all this, you're gonna steam it out. Then you take your brush and you go up and you just hold it. 
You know, you get it hot and then push it and hold it, brushing up slowly out of the steam. And it'll stay down. So you heat up this area, brush it up. Well, I got my finger inside there, so I have something to push against. So usually just brushing up like that will get rid of those little wrinkles. If it's not working, another trick is to wet the entire band, okay? You get two paper towels, one that's dry and one that's wet, clean paper towels, okay? You take the, uh, the wet paper towel and you dab it on the band until it starts getting dark and then you just start wetting the entire band, okay? Whenever you get a drip that falls down here or up here or something, you take your dry paper towel, dab it on those drips and they'll disappear. It'll soak it up like a sponge, okay? Um, then go ahead, darken it. You, you basically, uh, you know, totally saturating the ribbon band with water on a paper towel, okay? Anytime you get little drips, you take the dry one, you just mop it up, okay? It'll come right off. So you want to wet the entire band, okay? Um, the bow doesn't have to be done, but just the entire band, okay? And then you just put it on like a windowsill with like a little sun or something. Let the hat dry, okay? And what happens is a lot of times the band will shrink a tiny bit, you know, like a, I don't know, a millimeter or a quarter of a millimeter or a half. And it's enough to tighten that gap, okay? So that's another trick that sometimes we use to like after you make a band, you know, if you want it to be a little tighter, you wet it. Um, it's gotta be clean paper towels, nice clean water, and that's it. Set the hat down, let it dry. Now, um, I talked about the hat brush. We talked about the, ha uh, the hairspray. This is the stuff I use a lot. Um, this is, I don't know, Suave Max Hold. It's like, you know, the strong stuff, unscented. It works well. Oh, I have a JJ Hat Center. I just, just remembered I have a JJ Hat Center magnet thing. It's like a uh, collectible magnet. It's one of those neodymium magnets, a super strong thing. You could put it on your you know, lapel. And on the other side, it has some kind of a vintage hat scene. Yeah, it has something like that. And they also have some Stetson bandanas. Um, these are kind of like uh, giveaways that were given to me um, at JJ Hat Center. I'm gonna uh, give these things away. I'm gonna have some kind of giveaway contest. I think I have two red Stetson bandanas. You know, they're folded and new and un unused and stuff. And uh, I also have this magnetic uh, lapel pin kind of thing. So uh, I'm gonna talk about the giveaways uh, another time. Um, let's talk about linings, hat linings, okay? The inside lining is something like this, okay? They come in sizes, basically. A lot of hat companies just place them in. Some hat companies put a little uh, dab of a glue gun. They kind of wipe it, like a little wipe of hot glue. It's gotta be a wipe. And then they put it inside the hat and when they're all finished, they just flap the sweatband over, and that's it. So if you see this thing is bunched up or something like that, don't sweat it. Um, you can fix that yourself very easily. Let's, let's just uh, as an example, okay. So if your band, your, it looks a little bunched up somewhere, don't, don't freak out, okay? What you do is just open up. Open up your leather, sweatband, flip it out like that, okay? Grab your your lining somewhere, like at the corner here, and just grab it very close to where the glue is, if there's glue, and just pull it off. If there's no glue, it'll just come off like this, all right? Then what you wanna do is steam it. If it's wrinkled like this, you wanna steam it out. So you just get some steam, you flap it around in the steam like this, flap it around, and then you have a nice cylindrical shape again. You know, like all these parts that are all messed up will come down. Then you take the hat, you open it, okay? 
find where the back of the hat is and you just basically place it in. It's not hard. All right, let's go this way. Stetson logo facing front. You put it in. I like to open the crown when I do it so that it's against a nice flat surface. It is dome shaped. You just open everything like that and you, f you flap this over it. That's all it is. You don't really need to secure it with anything. That's it. Um, if you've got full hair and stuff, you can take these things out when it starts getting a little hotter and your hat will breathe a little better. You know, you can pull it out. It's not that hard. Um, and then you can put it back in if you need it. Um, these will, they'll make your hat a little bit warmer, okay? A little bit less breathable, but they'll also save your hat from getting sweat stains. So if you've got thinner hair on top or just a short haircut, um, your head will touch here and make sweat stains. And then instead of lasting 30, 40 years, your hat can last like, you know, a season or two. So don't take the lining out unless you've got very thick, you know, bushy hair, you know, lots of hair or something like that. Um, but linings can be changed, okay? If your lining is gross, it's yellow or just disgusting, you can change them. Um, you go to JJ's and you say, hey, I'd like a lining, you know, we'll put a lining in for you. Um, I think we have black ones with JJ Hat Center logos. But they come all different ways. Here's a Borsellino JJ one. Um, they just drop in. And you can't really ask for particular linings. Um, hat companies don't want, you know, us to have Stetson linings and Borsellino linings and stuff. Because then people can, like, sell certain hats as Borsellinos and they're not really, you know, it'll be like bootleg or something. So they control those linings. The only way you can, you know, get them is if you've taken them out of hats and stuff. Um, so generally, if you're gonna get a lining replaced, you're not gonna get one that says Stetson on it or something, um, unless you get very lucky and the hat shop has one laying around. Most likely you're gonna get something that says the name of their shop or just a plain lining or something like that. But um, really doesn't matter as long as the lining is clean. A dark color is always better than a light color, in my opinion. Uh, it just stays cleaner. And uh, remember, they come in sizes. So, you know, if you're a, a six and seven eighths, you know, like a small, you're gonna have a small lining. If you're like a seven and one eighth, you'll do a medium. It's a, um, a 59 or a seven three eighths or quarter, you might be a large. Um, always go a little bigger if you're in doubt, because if it can't reach, you'll have a problem. Um, but if it's a little too baggy, your lining, it'll be fine. So go bigger if you think you're on the line of two sizes. Um, 7 5 8, 61 or 60 might be an XL lining. And a 7 3 quarters or anything around there, you'll be a double X. So um, get the right lining, put it in and stuff. And don't sweat it if it's a little wrinkly or something. Um, you can put a little bit of uh, hot glue on the inside of your crown and just some people don't like the lining falling down onto their bald head or something, you know? So you could, you could attach it to the roof with just a little bit. But if you're using hot glue or any kind of glue, don't put like a, a squeeze of glue, like a ball of glue, because they harden into these little pellets that you can feel, these hard plastic pellets. So always wipe with the glue. You do, a, you know, a wipe inside of the uh, the crown, it won't go through, it's okay. But if you use a wipe of hot glue, it's flat and it, it dries flat and you could pin this to the ceiling of the, of the crown, but you're not gonna feel like a little hard pellet of glue. It'll just feel like nothing. So that's why they always wipe the hot glue. Um, and hot glue on the inside of the hat will not go through, so don't worry about it, but you use it sparingly. Um, that's about it. What else can I talk about? Uh, your essentials, okay. You know, having steam is good, but it's not necessary. A hat brush, some sticky tape to dust your hat, okay. Dust your hat first, then brush it, okay. Do both. This is not going to get all the dust off. This will get all the dust off, okay. This will get everything going in the same direction. It will clean the hat too, but um, I would dust it first. 
and then brush it and condition it uh, counterclockwise on the top. Everything counter, counter, counterclockwise. Uh, especially if you have a velour finish, like a Henry or a Huxley or a Miles, like a beaver finish, um, you need your hat brush. Anything is good. You could use a stiff, watery version, something a little softer. I like something with a little, you know, something a little bit wiry because it really gets all those hairs in the same direction. Um, sometimes I like using the wiry one and then finishing it off with either a fine brush or even one of those little foam sponges. So, you know, kind of the foam sponge and the fine brushes gives a different texture than a nice, like a, uh, a bristly brush, a wiry plastic brush will give it, get all that beaver hair, you know, the, the hair is going really nice and even, but uh, the softer brush might give it a different texture. Generally, one brush is enough. Uh, I think these are nice. They're right in the middle. They're hard, but they're also, you know, they get soft too. It just, just sort of depends how you use it. You could use it direct on for a more hard, or you could kind of use the side of it for a more softer approach. Um, remember to get the band, go upwards, dust it and everything like that. Never steam your sweatband, okay? Your sweatband is leather. Never let steam get in the inside of a hat, ever. Uh, if you have a ribbon sweatband or a cloth sweatband, I guess it won't hurt it. But if there's leather in there, don't mess around. Try to steam on this side if possible. And, and that also gives the hat a barrier so the steam won't burn your hand. The hat is between you and your hands, you know? It's just a good way to do it. You know, doing it like this gets more dangerous, getting the inside of the hat will always burn the leather, it's just bad. Don't do it, ever, ever, ever. Um, we talked about hairspray or uh, scout stiffener. Um, the brush, the tape, the jiffy steamer, which can be a very, very good tool. Also, when you're doing your laundry, you know, when you, uh, you're you lazy and you, you leave like a bag of laundry laying uh, for like a, a day and you haven't folded it yet and then you take it out of the bag and they're all like you know wrinkly you just get your steamer going you just just hit the button and just you know wave your t-shirts in front of it like this turn it over do the hold the bottom of it bam your, your shirts are ironed so these jiffy steamers are really good i'm probably going to work with them again sometime this year and do some some kind of discount Last year we did a 10% discount uh, if you put in like my hats and guitars code. Um, and they, you know, they gave me this steamer and, uh, you know, a few things. So I'm going to talk about um, doing another um, promotion with Jiffy Steamer this year if people are thinking about buying one. And then, um, you know, every time you guys uh, buy one, I'll be able to get you a, a discount if you just put in my code. So, you know, look for that. We'll be probably be doing that sometime, you know, soon. Not, not right now, there's no plans for it. But we've talked about working together in the future. So um, we'll try to set that up for you guys this spring or something. And um, that's about it. Um, we're gonna talk about hat care. We have to talk about how you set your hats down. It's the most important thing. 99% uh, of the stuff that we do to our hats comes from putting your hat flat on the table like this. We'll tend, we tend to grab it in the same place to pick it up when we do that. Every single time we pick it up, we're picking it up in the same place with a hard grab. So after, you know, a few thousands of those pickups, this gets threadbare and eventually you start getting a hole here. It's like a deep crease. It turns into a fold that turns into a threadbare fold, it turns into a little hole at the tip and the hole gets bigger and then a little bit bigger, a little bigger, bigger. Eventually it's the whole front is missing and you could put your fist through the front and the hat has to be thrown away. Um, all because you put your hat flat on the table. Now, it's not gonna happen overnight, but your hat should last you a good long time, you know, at least 10, 20 years, at least uh, longer. Um, there's hats around from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s now, and they're, you know, 70, 80, 90 years old, and uh, some of those look new, you know, and people take care of their stuff, uh, it, it tends to last. So, I'm gonna tell you like this, don't put your hat flat, okay? 
you're also making your brim flat now too. It starts to, let's say there's a little water in here from moisture, from sweat, from humidity, a tiny bit of rain, anything. The heaviness of that makes it droop. Okay, then when it dries, it dries flat like the tabletop. And what you get is a brim that starts up up here, see that? Okay, and winds up down here. So this is still flipped up. Look at the difference between the front and the back. That's common, because most of the time we'll put the hat down like this and the front will get more damage. The back is doing a little bit better. Okay. So the trick is keep the whole brim off the surface of the table by inverting it, okay? This way you keep your hat broken like this with the flange intact. It dries like that, it hardens up and you still have a flange to snap it up and down. Remember, this curved part, the flange, is the pivot point. That's the point where your hat will break down and up. If that flattens out and droops and gets flatter and flatter, there's no up and there's no down anymore. It's just in the middle and wavy. Okay, so you wanna preserve the curve. Preserve the curve is easily done. All you gotta do is don't set your hat flat on the table, okay? When you don't wear your hat, flip the front back up and Invert it, put it on a tabletop, put it on the top of the closet, or hang it. Okay, brim flipped up, hung, so that the flange is intact. You could even go and fix your brim. If it's a little wet, it'll dry any way you leave it. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that, you know? Now, hanging your hat can be a little weird because a lot of times we're going to grab it in this corner or this corner okay so if you do have a hat hung up it's not as good as leaving it flat okay or in the box the hat is flat that's good too so in the box upside down is the best if you're going to hang it okay be aware that this is the weak point of the hat and don't grab it there no squishing just let the hat almost fall into your hands you know so use a whole hand to grab it so you kind of like, it's hanging. You just let the whole thing, and you can grab it by one point, but gently, and not here. You know, just let the whole thing go into your hand. Be aware that's a weak point and just let it be gentle, okay? Or grab it by the brim, you know? People never think about doing that. Grab it by the brim, that's okay. It's one of those things that grandpa always says there, don't hold it by the, the crown, always hold it by the brim. And that's true, you gotta take your hat off, take it off by the brim. Um, don't grab it here. Don't, don't grab it there. Keep your hat upside down, in the box, two best. Hanging it is also good, and also flip your brim up if you wear it down, okay? You might say, I'm not one of those hipsters, I don't wear it up. Well, if you wear your hat down, the way to keep it snapped down and nice and snappy is by preserving that curve, okay? So its natural position is up. This is like you're bending the hinge, you know? So you want it up and you want no surface. You don't want that hitting any surface. So it should be almost floating. The brim should be floating, either hanging or upside down like that, okay? That way the next day you still have a good curve there, it's still going up, so you can snap it way down. Now, if you got one of these kind of wimpy up curves and it's all flat like that, there's like nowhere to go. It's just, it barely goes down, you know? And it's it's just wimpy. So you want a nice good curve, even if it's going all Ed Norton, it doesn't matter. You're not wearing it like that, right? You're wearing it like this. So let it go extra up, up, up if you, if you have to. No big deal, you're not an up guy anyway, right? It's just when it's, hung, when it's hung up. And then, that way, when you can flip it, okay? So remember, a good curve up is a sign of a healthy hat, and it's what you want, especially if you're wearing your hat down. It's also good when you're wearing your hat up. You just want a nice, even curved brim. If the sides start sagging, you can steam it here and push it up. Unhold it. Push it up. Let go, okay? Get everything up, that's fine. Next thing you do is 
against the tabletop. You do the little flattening Kevin move. I'm sure you've seen it if you're an avid Kevin binge watcher. Um, I think that's about it. I'm gonna say one more thing. Keep your hats away from heat. Don't put it on a sunny dashboard, your cowboy hat. As cool an image as that is, just keep it away from the sunny dashboards. Don't store it in the hot rooms. If you've got a hot house with like, you know, the radiators really blasting, put it someplace that's cool, the one room in the house where there's no heat. Put it in the basement or down by the front door or something where it's a little cool by the uh, storm door on the side of the house. Um, put it someplace cool. Heat is gonna shrink your hats and make them unwearable, especially if you don't wear them for a season or two. They shrink up. The leather shrinks and dehydrates from the heat in your house. So always keep your hats in a cool place, especially if they're wet. If they're wet, more important, let it dry in a cool, like uh, open up the window in your bathroom like an inch or in your uh, kitchen and close the door so only that one room is cold. Hang your hat up and let it dry in a cool environment, not your hot apartment. Um, heat is the enemy of your hats, especially if there's leather sweatbands. It will shrink your fur felt slowly, but if you have a hot apartment, you live in whatever, Fargo, North Dakota, and everybody's hot, it, you know, house is hot in the winter, your Western hat with the leather sweatband is gonna like lose a millimeter every couple of years and eventually it's gonna be like just really, really small on it. So um, the way to reverse that pro process is to keep it out of heat. Um, and if there's no way around it, wear your hats. It's two elements. It's the heat in the house plus not wearing the hat makes the hats dry out. If you wear the hats, the oils in your head will condition the leather and keep it from shrinking. So you just wear your hat, you know, like three times a week or something, two times a week. Your hat won't dry out and shrink up into like nothing. Um, I get a lot of that. People say, yeah, my hat shrunk and then they put it on and it's like way at the top of their head. Like it barely fits them. You know, it's like four or five sizes too small. And the first thing I'll say to them is, you haven't worn that hat in a long time, right? It's been in storage in your house. Yeah, how'd you know that? That's what happens, it's a common thing. So, um, if you have a couple of Westerns, whatever, that you've been storing and you haven't even touched them in a long time, put them on, they'll be a little tight. The way to, to reverse that is to start wearing it and also cut the reed. See, I cut the reed in my hat here clip it in there there's a wire in this little tube this black tube here there's a, a nylon fishing line and once you clip that the tension in the circle breaks there's no more it's like a, a ring of piano wire that you're trying to pull over your head and it's too tight but once you clip that ring the hat can now stretch okay so if you have a leather sweatband you, and it's too small the only way to get a stretch is to clip the reed with a scissor or a needle nose, what do you call it, a wire cutter? That's it, you just clip it and that's it. You don't have to take the reed out, leave it in. Okay, what the reed does is it gives you this nice sort of round, springy, always comes back to a round shape. That's why the reed is in there. So it always comes back to that shape. But once you clip the, the tension on the reed, you'll still get the shape thing, but what happens is there's a, a, a nylon fishing line. So if I stretch this out all the way out to here, right? Like from a 59 to let's say a 69, you know, like a quadruple X, what would happen is that nylon piece of fishing line, that ring will open, 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 open. It's stretching, it's meant to stretch, it's flexible, right? And then it'll start coming back to its original shape because that's what this does. It keeps this oval shape and size to remain. So if you stretch the hell out of it, you, you mess up the shape, it always comes back to that nice circle, okay? And it's flexible, it's very stretchy. So you bring it like out here for a regular stretch, no problem, it'll just come back. So that's the reason why your stretches never hold. It, they're always, always temporary is the reed is in here. It's one little thing that's keeping you from stretching it. So if you clip it, 
then you could start stretching your hat. Um, a hat jack is hard because you only stretch this area, so you get a stair step thing. So then you have to blend the stair step into a kind of a slant. But uh, always steam the back when you're doing a stretch. So that way it makes the stretch happen in the back and you don't see it in the front. So you stretch the back. You might even lose a tiny bit of brim, but when you gain, and you'll also lose a tiny bit of height on the crown when you're stretching, but you'll also get a stretch that stays uh, and doesn't contract, you know, because of that elasticity of the reed. So I have about five or six videos about cutting the reed, stretch a hat. You could put that in, in the search of YouTube, cut the reed, stretch a hat, and you'll learn exactly how to clip that and, you know, the whole uh, theory behind it, which I think I just went through. Uh, we talked about linings and stuff. You know, these are replaceable. We sell them at JJ's and install them for you. Um, you can clean these, I guess. Get some woolite, you know, wash it, you know, some warm water, you know, rinse the heck out of it. Try to wash it and then put it back into shape like this and then let it dry on a towel, no heat. After that, you steam it, steam it and just get the wrinkles out. Um, as long as the thing doesn't shrink from heat or something, you should be able to get it back in your hat once it's dry. I've never heard of anybody washing this. Um, they used to be super, super cheap, these things, like 10 bucks, and then they went up to 15, and they went up to 25, so nowadays I could understand maybe trying to clean it, but uh, you could probably find some hat linings somewhere, you know, that are cheaper, but we sell them for 25 and stuff. Um, and they're pretty nice ones, the ones we sell. But yeah, generally I think uh, a hat lining will last you long enough. You know, you can have a hat lining for 10 or 20 years. So if you get 20 years use out of it, I would say you don't need to wash it. You could get a new one. Um, and then your hat gets a nice little steam up and everything looks nice and new. It's like getting new shoelaces on a pair of sneakers. Kind of makes it look new and there's a fresh new lining in there and stuff, you know. Um, you could also get sweatbands replaced, you know, that's something that's doable too if it's starting to rot on you. Um, we do that at our workshop at JJ Hat Center. So JJ Hat Center is 800-622-1911 uh, if you're in the U.S. or it's 212-239-4368 uh, if you're uh, not in the United States. You can call us or you can email us. Um, I think that's info at jjhatcenter.com. And, uh, you know, we do have a workshop there. You can send us hats for cutting the brims, adding bound edges, blocking them, um, putting new bands on them, all that stuff. We could put fancy bands on them. We could put crazy bands on them. Um, we could re-block stuff. I could re-steam stuff. There's a menu for everything. Um, and uh, there's a guy in the workshop, his name is Van, he's our hatter, and you know, if you actually need some hat surgery done, you could call us or email us and talk to Van. He's usually there weekdays, I believe, uh, 11.30 to 5 o'clock. So, yeah, we'll talk about those giveaways on a, uh, a, an episode soon. We'll figure out some kind of fun contest, commenting contest to give away those Stetson bandanas and this cool pin thing and stuff, magnet thing. Um, I think that's about it. So everybody, um, thanks again for all of your support, for the comments and for the, all the nice compliments and for you know watching us and binge watching us. If you could uh, subscribe to my other channel, Frankie's World NYC. Um, it's a channel I uh, share with a very cool young director who's uh, very motivated and up and coming and it's kind of like a comedy it's a little bit off-color comedy to be like uh, honest uh, you know, there's a lot of like mafia stuff and shooting and but uh, there's also a lot of sci-fi and thrillers and twists and plots and stuff like that so um, maybe you might enjoy it it's called Frankie's World NYC so you guys can subscribe to that and um, that would be awesome I'll try to give you a shout out if you do I know a lot of you guys already have, like uh, Secret Daisy, um, who else, uh, Cool Gamer, Dave, um, many of you guys have. 
and uh, I appreciate that. It's uh, from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for all of your support and uh, and all of the cool uh, donations. Um, I don't have any kind of like Patreon membership thing, but uh, a few people, what are they doing out there? You hear the horn? Someone's leaning on their horn. Wow. Anyway, um, I just, uh, I appreciate whenever you guys give me one of those cool surprise donations via P PayPal. Um, it does help me get like the lights and the green screen thing now. So I have a cool backdrop. I'm trying to do better off with the, um, with the audio. Um, right now somebody's been leaning on his horn for like a full 90 seconds. That's incredible. Um, but I'm going to say goodbye and just thank you guys for everything, for watching me, for your great uh, love and support. And uh, I appreciate every single one of you guys who watches my videos. Um, a lot of you guys I've met at the shop. I am there uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at JJ Hat Center, 11 to, 11 to 6, opening to closing. And um, I've met a few of you guys uh, recently, and it's always a, a, a pleasure when you come in and say, yeah, I know your videos, man, you know? You kind of feel like a, a minor wannabe celebrity for a couple of seconds, and it's kind of cool and stuff. Other people are watching me, you know, like my coworkers, and they're kind of like, yeah, Kevin, he's cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, salute, you know, get your, uh, Get your horsehair brim brush. You know, if you haven't gotten one, JJ sells them. Uh, if we say we're sold out, we're not. Call the shop. We do have brim brushes. Uh, we don't have cap banu pads right now, but we have uh, we have nice ergonomic brim brushes. This was a uh, actually this German one was a a gift from uh, a cool viewer, Roger, who just uh, bought one for me. And uh, that was just a really nice token. I was waiting for JJ's to get them in stock and they just didn't have them. He's like, yeah, I'll buy you one. He's just an awesome guy. Uh, always has something really cool to say. And he's a hat steamer himself and a, has a very, very nice collection of hats, you know, custom made stuff from JJ hats and other places too. And um, everybody else, Daisy, uh, who's one of our best supporters, um, um, thank you for, for everything. You are awesome and um, shout out to you and to Buddy and I uh, hope everything's doing good there in the country. Um, Dave, you're awesome. You always give me cool thumbs ups and likes everywhere and um, he's a, a jazz guitarist who's uh, actually got great taste in uh, guitars and caps and everything else. And uh, all you guys out there, Spaz Tech Warrior and uh, Bearded Vato and um, uh, who else? Uh, Francis Xavier and uh, uh, who else? Webb Griffith, Griffin um, who made that cool painting that I used to show at the beginning that I haven't shown in a while. Yeah, he makes paintings. If you want him to make you one of these sort of primitive art scene things, uh, Wes, you'll see his comments all the time. He always comments. You can, you know, hit him up and he'll tell you how he can make a painting for you. He's pretty awesome. He sent this to me. Somehow the posted fell off or something, so there's like posted duty or thing. So I was like, oh, I'll pay for it. And I had to see what was in there. And it's me and my guitar and my hat and stuff. And I actually put the letters on there because I wanted it to be like a, uh, like a, you know, a poster sign for the, for the, the show here, you know. All right, so anyway, guys, you take care of yourself and uh, have a great uh, day. Bum 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 b